Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship, where we love you enough to tell you the truth. On these programs, you will be able to follow our expository study of the authorized King James Version as we read verse by verse through books and occasionally tackle important topics for the purpose of helping Bible believers gain a thorough and accurate understanding of God's Word. We now invite you to join us in our study. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And uh, if you will read through the Bible every year and faithfully listen to these messages and uh, pray without ceasing, then the Lord will teach you the Bible. And this time next year, you'll know the Word better than you do now. As a matter of fact, if you start doing that now, if you aren't already then by the time January 1, 2010, which sounds very weird to say, is right around the corner. 2010. But by January 1, 2010, you'll know the Bible better than you do October 18th, 2009. It's faithfulness. And uh, happy birthday, Tori. 13. And uh, new violin. won't be long. She'll be playing, I, I like to call it a fiddle. And uh, she'll be fiddling. <laughs> You'll be fiddling, and I'll be blowing the blues harp. <laughs> and we got uh, some other instruments we'll add too. But she's 13 years old. And uh, Tori knows the Bible better now at her 13th birthday than she did her 12th birthday because she has read the Bible, and she hasn't gone through the whole Bible in the last year, but she's gone through a lot of the Bible. Every little bit helps. You may not make it through the whole Bible. Don't get discouraged. Just be faithful to read the Bible every day. She's also studied with us. She's also studied with her family. That's important to have a family altar. And uh, prayed a lot over the last year. And all that contributes to spiritual growth. So not only is she 13, a year older, but she's been baptized. She has grown spiritually. And that's the most important thing about your birthday, is that every birthday you're spiritually matured a year more than the previous year. Otherwise, the only thing you do is get closer to dying. <laughs> huh? Amen. <laughs> that's not a bad thing if you're saved, brother. All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I just want to read uh, verses 1 through 3. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, under the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now Paul starts out his letters like this, uh, it's a greeting. He announces himself. So we know, this may sound very basic, but it's important. We know from what we just read a few things. You just learned something about the book of 1 Corinthians. Number one, who wrote it? Paul. So Paul is the human author of this book. Now, the Bible is just like Jesus. The Bible's called the Word of God. Jesus is called the Word of God. Jesus was the living word, but the Bible's called a book that is living and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword in Hebrews 4.12. The Bible and Jesus have dual natures. Jesus was God and man. And so when He took upon Himself flesh, He was fully man, not half man. He was fully man, but He was also fully God. 1 Timothy 3.16, God was manifest in the flesh. Same thing's true about the Bible. The Bible is a fully, completely human book. Human authors wrote it, and yet it's divine, and fully, completely divine, infallible, inspired, inerrant. And so you see Jesus, and you see the Bible, and you see this dual nature of God's message in His words in this book, and you see God's uh, in in God's Savior. His servant, Jesus, who came as a child, born of a virgin, sinless, died for the sins of the world. He was fully human and fully divine. And this book you have on your lap is fully human 
and fully divine. That's why you see a difference between the books. You can tell there's different human authors. And yet there's a difference between what Paul wrote here in 1 Corinthians and other things Paul wrote. He wrote a, an epistle to the Laodicean church that isn't in the Bible. Why is that? Because that book was totally just Paul's. Now, I'm sure God led him, like he'll lead Mike to read an, or write an article for the website. He'll lead, he led Paul in that epistle to Laodicea and a third epistle to the church of Corinth and other things he wrote. But he led him just like he does Annie when you write articles for Random Truth. He, he led Paul like he has him writers, like when Jenny writes a song. God led her to write those words to those songs. Now, that's not the same as what we see in the Scripture when God not only led these men, but actually breathed through them through their vocabulary, through their intellect, through their personality, through their experiences. God breathed through those men the very words He wanted us to have. It's a little different from Jenny's songs. We can say Jenny's songs are inspired by God in the sense that in the English uh, definition of the word inspire, it means that God is the one who motivated her God is the one who's made her what she is today, and so she has produced those songs. You've produced these articles because of God working in you. Still, though, that is different from what we're reading here in 1 Corinthians and the rest of the Bible, and it's different from what you would read if ever they discover that epistle to Laodicea or the third epistle to Corinth. We won't add that to this book because that will still be a writing of Paul that was not breathed by God. So we have to understand what we're reading. And Paul is the human author. We also know Paul was a Jew and that he was a chosen apostle of Jesus Christ. Uh, unlike a lot of these people we see today who claim to be apostles, Paul was authentic. And we know he was chosen by God for that position. And we see that he wrote this just as it was written by Paul, but yet breathed by God. He wrote this to the church of Corinth... But look what he said there in verse 2. And all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. So it's not just to Corinth, but it's also to Laodicea and to the church in Sincrea and the church in Macedonia and the church in Jerusalem and the church in Antioch and the church in Worthington at the screens in the continent and October 18, 2009. All in every place that call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you read this, you have to understand what we're talking about. The background, you have to understand the context, you have to understand who, what he's talking about in first century Christianity in that local church, but you also understand there is application for all Christians in every true church. A true church is a body made up of born-again believers who have been baptized by immersion as an outward sign of the inward change that has taken place and have organized themselves by the Word of God, to meet on a regular basis uh, for the purpose of functioning as a local church. That would be us. <laughs> Amen. So let's pick up there in verse uh, 4. Let's read verses 4 through 6. Read it with me. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything ye are enriched by Him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. This is very interesting to any of... I know Jenny and Mike especially have studied this book enough to know that this is very interesting, that Paul is speaking highly of their spiritual growth. Because if you've read this book, you know what's coming. He also has a lot of problems with this local church. And that speaks volumes to us as individual believers and to as a, us as a local body. That you can grow in certain areas of your walk with God and yet totally fail in other areas. You can be commended for what you're doing over here, but yet be completely off base and in need of rebuke in another area. None of us should ever reach a point where we think we don't have any place to grow. I'll say, you know, just trying to be uh, uh, critical, you know, thinking critically, that's not a bad thing, and uh, looking at our local fellowship. We've got some areas that we can improve on. 
We can talk highly about things we're doing as far as outreach. We can talk highly about the fact that we're consistently, we teach and preach the Word, and we learn the Word. But we have to pray about other things we might be able to do better. I think that uh, we're working out a lot of kinks as far as working together to get this thing going every Sunday here at the continent. Uh, screens at the continent. Uh, there are changes that we have to be able to, we have to be changeable. We have to be uh, willing to kind of go with what the need is. We don't change what we do when it comes to ministry, but we do have to change what we do as far as a accommodating people coming in and become a part of the fellowship. We have to be willing to change. Uh, we also, on a personal level, I can't read your mind. I don't know what's going on every day at your home, what you're doing on the job, and all that sort of thing. But we all have to take inventory. Are there things that we need to do on an individual level to grow? You may come out for blitzes, and you may go out with us in the neighborhoods, but are you witnessing in your own personal life, in your own friends and family and neighbors as you talk to them when you go to the gas station I admit uh, girls who tell on me if I don't there are times where I fail because I'm in a hurry and I don't have the the little scripture card or whatever and I'm trying I'm trying to improve there we have room for improvement <laughs> uh, so I'm not going to sit up here and start uh, trying to nail everybody on <laughs> everything that you need to <laughs> and you need to you know but that's what we need to be willing to do especially on our alone time with God and we're praying and we're doing an inventory the Psalms that's why I tell people read five Psalms a day you go through the Psalms every month and while you do that you'll see over and over and over the psalmist says to reveal he's in different words but he'll say reveal to me my heart Show me my heart. Show me what I need to do. Show me the changes. And Paul has that attitude. But he also does give praise where it's due. I think we need to be careful to do that. We don't always want to be critical. I'm always telling you, we don't always want to be positive because that's not healthy. But we don't always want to be critical. I, I talk to the girls and there's, you know, Kayla has some issues with her schoolwork. So I have to get on to her. And I had to ground all three of them from the Internet for about five days because they failed to do something they're supposed to do. Uh, I have to do that. At the same time, I'm very proud of those girls. And I tell them. I tell them I love them. I tell Kayla. I mean, she's, everybody knows she's uh, beyond her years when it comes to uh, what she's doing with the web ministry. She works the camera and keeps the recording so that we can put it on the things on the Internet. And you look at... 13-year-old Tori now, you know, she's playing her instrument and faithfully practicing and, you know, doing that sort of thing. And Mariah is always so helpful and she is trying to uh, learn things about cooking so that she can add to our fellowship whenever we want food and trying to help Jenny out who has done so much over the years and in, in, the last three years cooking and taking care of our needs, you know. Everybody, I look at them, you know, Mariah is uh, a great reader, and I, keep, I tell her all the time, you, you know, you find a, a educational niche, a degree program, and a job where you can use that and read and research and f produce your findings and writing in a detailed, clear, organized form, that'll get you places. That's a big problem. A lot of people, they can think, but they can't express it. And a lot of them... People are smart, but they can't read and, and, and really take in what they're reading. That, that's a gift. So everybody's got those gifts. I could go around the room, of course, and with Jenny and her uh, guitar playing and the, the writing, and the, she's a woman of prayer, uh, and Annie and her work on the Internet and her work with the uh, unwed mothers and you know all that sort of thing. Lee, we've talked about it. He's come to me wanting to be more used of God. Now he's going to go out when he gets back from his trip. We're going to go out on Thursdays witnessing and talking and praying together. And he wants to get more active. And that's, that's exciting. It's awesome. And Mike, 